Have you ever wanted to invest in quantum computing and machine learning? Well, today is the day because we are going to do a deep dive into QTUM. Now, most of you know, if you follow the channel, I do ETFs and I only invest in ETFs. It is not the cryptocurrency, but we're looking at the Defiance Quantum ETF with the ticker symbol in this QTUM gives exposure to exactly what we're looking with the emergent frontiers of quantum computing and machine learning. So in this video, I want to unpack exactly what it does hold within there, what's inside the performance, which is just absolutely exceptional, what the risks are, and of course, what is the reason and should it be in your portfolio? So if you're interested in the really thematic um, tech ETFs, this is one you have to stick around for. So let's go ahead and get in. So what exactly is this ETF? It is the Defiance Quantum ETF. So it is not Vanguard. It is not a company that I hadn't heard of, but doing a little bit more research, Morningstar does rate it five stars, so it is pretty good. Publicly traded, launched back in 2018. Now think about that for a minute. Seven years ago, this was focused on machine learning and quantum computing. That's a long runway for this ETF to be out. Now it does track the Blue Star Machine Learning and Quantum Computing Index. They said this was formerly known as the quantum indices, and the index includes companies that are global and have a significant portion of their business from quantum computing or machine learning or the infrastructure for both. So not only are you getting into the quantum computing space, you're also looking at the machine learning and the infrastructure itself, meaning all of the hardware, all of the software, the AI, semiconductors, and even the supporting tech stacks that we do have behind these companies. Now, it is an equity ETF, not a derivative, not a future fund. It is passively managed. Now, that is something important to note. Passively managed ETF using physical equity exposure and rebalances semi-annually. Now, majority of these really big cutting edge ETFs that we see do kind of automatically rebalance because, again, it is passively managed. It is going to rebalance every six months, which I love, meaning there is going to be some changes. Now, it is not a pure quantum fund that is whole, that is good because it has some adjacent technologies out there, AI semiconductors, and a lot of these companies are the cutting edge quantum companies, but there is also some of those staple ones in there. So since the inception, the quantum computing has really viewed as more of an emerging market and of course, a little bit niche, a little bit speculative, which short of, I believe, D-Wave, there isn't any practical application or really income generation that we're seeing from these companies. So let's go ahead and I wanna break down exactly what we're seeing within this ETF because it is pretty interesting. So let's cover this guys. So this is again, QTUM. This is the quantum computing revolution. Now, again, like I had said earlier, I invest in the ETFs and this of course is an ETF. So if you wanna do your research, this is definitely where you need to. Um, really transformative technology reshaping the future and looking at the market price and looking at where we are for the growth. You'll notice total returns right down here. Cumulative year to date, it is up 30%, which of course far exceeding that we see like the S&P 500. One month it is 10%, three months 14, six months up 41% since inception. So thinking about the last seven years, since 2018, since this has released, 344%, that is a just astronomical growth guys now remember the rule of seven means it's going to take roughly seven years to to go ahead depending on the return to duplicate or to um, double the portfolio if we're looking at 350 percent growth in the last seven years that is kind of a crazy runway that we've seen with the growth even looking at the annual returns you can see running around 23 percent and even calendar years guys Looking at 2024, we are over 50% growth. And you can notice even the first year, 2018, didn't really count. Not sure exactly the day it released in 2018, but overall, I mean, 48, 42, 35, negative 28, which we know that was a really big market pullback that year, 39 and then 50%. And honestly, I feel like there is an incredible runway when it comes to quantum computing, because again, the technology is getting to the point where it's gonna be feasible to use, where we're gonna see a lot more, and we're starting to see a lot more practical applications when it comes to really this computing revolution. So it does, in my opinion, guys, do your own research, has a very long runway. Now looking overall, um, premium discount, um, pretty good in there. Even looking at the mean ratio, looking at the expense ratio of 0.4, so a little bit higher again than we traditionally see, but overall the assets pretty good, over two billion in there for the assets. And now the top holdings, this is again where it gets kind of interesting because 
I have done a couple videos now on quantum computing. And if you look at Rigetti right up here on Computer Inc., if you look at D-Wave, even looking at a couple, um, we have Oracle in here, we have Micron, we have Intel, we have AMD on um, tower semiconductors. So pretty much all of the big players, even looking at Ion Cube, and I actually did a video, if you didn't catch it, um, on Rigetti, on D-Wave, and Ion Q as being the three big quantum computing cutting edge companies that we have out there. Now, one thing to note is you'll notice that it is not the really big tech companies. We're not seeing your NVIDIAs. We're not seeing your Metas. And also to note with this is it is a little bit different because when we start looking at the distribution or how this is made up, it is built up and it is treated a little bit different because it is based on a different weight. Now, remember, when we look at a traditional S&P 500, it is based on market cap. This is not based on market cap. This is based on, um, and I believe it is based on the holdings itself. Again, it's, it's kind of different on how it shows up in here because it shows that it holds 80 stocks across tech, industrial, semiconductor, AM or AI, and the quantum specter. Most of it is in information technology, which is 80 to 85%. And then going through the, the QTM uses an adjusted equal weight scheme rather than just the pure market cap for its index, meaning that it is not and it is preventing being dominated by a mega cap company or a large company. That's the reason, again, when we look at the top holdings that are in those quantum computing companies, that is exactly where we want it. So of course, when we start looking at the returns that we've seen and how fast this has been growing, it's been kind of incredibly, um, incredibly fast, incredibly high, but you also have to remember there are gonna be risks. Now, when it comes to emerging tech, when it comes to quantum computing, there is a lot of volatility in here. These are still considered, a majority of them are small cap companies. Also, what does the liquidity look like? What does the trade spread look like? Um, again, because these are small or even micro cap companies that we're seeing in some of these. And this is also a concentration or a, a thematic risk that you could have in there or the index risk, as well as the tech and the innovative risk. My thought about quantum computing, it is still very new. Many projects are gonna fail. Some of those might underperform. And I'm almost wondering if there's gonna be a point where we see some of these really strong tech companies like NVIDIA um, that just purchase out and just straight out buy some of these companies as quantum computing really does come up online and exactly what it looks like. So how do you invest in these? My personal thought in here is I put it 5% of my portfolio. So anytime a couple percent, and again, I don't wanna go out there, I don't wanna buy a bunch of quantum computing companies um, and buy just you know 1% here, 1% there. I would rather put a full 5% into something like this that we know has a little bit more risk, has a little bit more upside in here, because when we start looking at quantum computing, promises disruptive computing capacity, and we are seeing it with the capability that we have. Very good synergy with AI, machine learning, and data. Imagine being able to do it just exponentially faster. Rising R&D spend in really the corporate interest. When we start looking at IBM, Google, Microsoft, NVIDIA, um, really looking and committing a lot to quantum research, which means, again, as maturity grows, as com commercialization does come about, it could be not only an opportunity for these companies to grow, but also these companies to go ahead and really um, scale. So this can also have a lot of infrastructure enabling technology. When we start looking at qubits, cryogenics, control electrics, there's a lot of different things in here, software layers, error correction, um, being able to do just an incredible amount of things at a huge, huge speed. Then of course, early mover. If you're getting in here, and I wish I did seven years ago because we would have seen that 300% return. Um, if it really captures that outside growth that we see in here, the QTUM provides really an entry ticket to all of those companies in the quantum computing space that we absolutely love to see. So guys, again, you gotta be careful of the risk. You have to do your own research in this because of course, best case, we could see a massive upswing in this. Worst case, and, and really we could see it stall out a little bit on um, the hype might die off for quantum computing. But again, when it comes to some of the practical application, I feel like it's really gonna go there. So QTUM um, honestly gives you exposure to that quantum computing, also the machine learning. So if you want exposure to both of those, these are ones that you could absolutely um, go ahead and get in there. Again, I use it as a satellite position, as a little bit outside of you know having the BOO, having the QQQ, um, having a little bit more diversification in there. So guys, if you like the deep dives like this, just into specific ETFs, 
definitely hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments. Um, are you going in? Are you buying the quantum ETFs? Are you just completely out not wanting to get interested in it? Do you see a lot of runway in it? Um, and I'll see you in the next video.